Okay. So the main problem from what we see here is a SIADH and a cerebral salt wasting syndrome. Mostly occurs which you commonly see in a neurointensive critical care unit. So SIADH, as you all know, is a syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone. So the name itself goes, it's an inappropriate antidiuretic hormone releaser and infecting us. So inappropriate increase in ADH leads to volume expansion. So there will be tubular reabsorption of sodium will be inhibited. So as a result, there will be increase in the urine sodium. Always remember SIADH and cerebral salt wasting, almost all the symptoms will be same. The only difference is SIADH will have a volume expansion, whereas cerebral salt wasting is a volume depletion. Volume depletion. Leave about all. This is the only di only difference you just need to remember. Remaining all the urine sodium, urine osmolality, everything will be almost the same. Okay. So as we as we have discussed earlier, it is of three types. One is hypertonic hyponatremia, isotonic hyponatremia, and hypotonic hyponatremia. So as you know, it all depends on the sodium. So hypertonic is Increase of other osmols like the glucose or the presence of mannitol or an IV contrast, where because of all these, the sodium levels go down. The best example for this, which you see a regular case in ICU, is a diabetic ketoacidosis. So if you see a patient of diabetic ketoacidosis, always the patient presents with hyponatremia. So don't forcefully jump in and then correct the hyponatremia. Once you start correcting your sugar levels, automatically the sodium comes down. There is a formula for which I will show you in the latter slides how to correct the sodium for the higher sugar levels. Okay. So this is normal osmolality. That is the osmol levels will be normal. There will be the tone osmolality will be normal, but there will be a low sodium. So this is a case where you can see severe hyperlipidemia or hyperproteinemia and decreased plasma osmolality. This is hypotonic hyponatremia. So there are three causes for this. When you see a decreased plasma osmolality and a decreased sodium, then you need to check your volume status. So check the volume status. If the patient is hypovolemic, it is due to any causes of volume depletion like your diuretics or diarrhea or vomiting. If it is euvolemic, it is SADH or cerebral salt wasting syndrome or hypothyroidism and secondary renal insufficiency, all those problems. If it is hypervolemic, you can see in case of heart failure, cirrhosis or advanced kidney failure. You can most of the times you can see in a heart failure patient, you can see hyponatremia as well as in cirrhosis. So in those patients, you don't need to give more of water because the hypovolemia worsens as well as the hyponatremia worsens. Okay. How to check this plasma osmolality? The formula is 2 into sodium plus glucose by 18 plus bun by 2.8. So once you check the plasma osmolality, as we have discussed earlier, you need to check the urine osmolality also. So if your labs doesn't have an urine osmolality, the easiest way to check your urine osmolality, you can get even the plasma osmolality in your labs or you can use this formula. But for urine osmolality, if you don't get, always you can send your urine routine and you can check your specific gravity and the last digits into 10 will be your urine osmolality. In the specific gravity, last two digits into 10 will be your urine osmolality if you don't have a lab. So I think the slide is not clear, but I think you may be able to understand it.